So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa ila hadrat al-Nabi Muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Fatiha. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبارك الذي بيده الملك وهو على كل شيء قدير الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا وهو العزيز الغفور الذي خلق سبع سماوات طباقا ما ترى في خلق الرحمن من تفاوت فارجع البصر هل ترى من فطور ثم ارجع البصر كرتين ينقلب إليك البصر خاسئا وهو حسير ولقد زينا السماء الدنيا بمصابيح وجعلنا رجوما للشياطين وأعتدنا لهم عذاب السعير وللذين كفروا بربهم عذاب جهنم وبئس المصير إذا ألقوا فيها سمعوا لها شيقا وهي تفور تكاد تميز من الغيظ كلما ألقي فيها فوج سألهم خزنتها ألم يأتكم نذير قالوا بلى قد جاءنا نذير فكذبنا وقلنا ما نزل الله من شيء إن أنتم إلا في ضلال كبير وقالوا لو كنا نسمع أو نعقل ما كنا في أصحاب السعير فاعترفوا بذنبهم فسحقا لأصحاب السعير إن الذين يخشون ربهم بالغيب لهم مغفرة وأجر كبير واسروا قولكم أو اجهروا به إنه عليم بذات الصدور ألا يعلم من خلق وهو اللطيف الخبير هو الذي جعل لكم الأرض ذلولا فامشوا في مناكبها وكلوا من رزقه وكلوا من رزقه وإليه النشور أأمنتم من في السماء أن يخصف بكم الأرض فإذا هي تمور أم أمنتم من في السماء أن يرسل عليكم حاصبا فستعلمون كيف نذير ولقد كذب الذين من قبلهم فكيف كان نكير 
أولم يروا إلى الطير فوقهم صافات ويقبض ما يمسكهن إلا الرحمن إنه بكل شيء بصير أمن هذا الذي هو جند لكم ينصركم من دون الرحمن إن الكافرون إلا في غرور أمن هذا الذي يرزقكم إن أمسك رزقه بل لجوا في عدو ونفور أفمن يمشي مكبا على وجهه أهدا أمن يمشي سويا أمن يمشي سويا على صراط مستقيم قل هو الذي أنشأكم وجعل لكم السمع والأبصار والأفئدة قليلا ما تشكرون قل هو الذي ذرأكم في الأرض وإليه تحشرون ويقولون متى هذا الوعد إن كنتم صادقين قل إنما العلم عند الله وإنما أنا نذير مبين فلم وجوه الذين كفروا وقيل هذا الذي كنتم به تدعون قل أرأيتم إن أهلكني الله ومن معي أو رحمنا فمن يجير الكافرين من عذاب أليم قل هو الرحمن آمنا به وعليه توكلنا فستعلمون من هو في ضلال مبين قل أرأيتم إن أصبح ما فمن يأتيكم بماء معين وما تقدموا لأنفسكم من خير تجدوه عند الله هو خيرا وأعظم أجرا واستغفروا الله إن الله غفور رحيم استغفر الله 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 
Astaghfirullah 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 wa atubu ilayhi shahidallahu annahu la ilaha illa huwa wal وَأُولُو الْعِلْمِ قَائِمًا بِالْقِسْطِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ لا إله إلا الله 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 سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا محمد رسول الله إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي الحمد لله يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما الله صل وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه 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 وسلم 
اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا وقرة أعيننا سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما صلى الله عليه So to this evening, just want everyone to make sure that we're in a proper state. We've entered into our sacred space. Sayyidina Anas radiallahu ta'ala narrates that when you walk into the masjid, the Prophet used to make a dua. It's posted for the people that when they come in. Allahumma aftah la babu rahmatika. The Sayyidina Anas also continues that when he said, whenever the Prophet entered into the masjid, he would also say, Bismillah, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. And when he exited, so when we all come into the masjid, after saying our dua for the doors of mercy to be open, we're supposed to pray upon the Prophet. And then when we leave, we make the dua for opening of Fadr. And then he said to Allah in this beautiful hadith narrated in the Sunnah of Imam Dawood. Abu Dawood he says, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad. Allahumma simni min ash shaitan ar rajim. O oh Allah, confirm blessings upon Muhammad and upon the family of Sayyidina Muhammad. And protect me from the devil. This is our dua when we enter into the sacred space of the mosque. And when we enter and when we exit the sacred place of the mosque. So we should make our niyyah today. 12th day of Rabi al Awwal, then whenever we enter into the masjid, always send your salams upon the Prophet. And we'll make one more thing mentioned today after we just continued our dhikr. Ibn Atta radiallahu an says that the dua, the supplication, so we're hoping for all of our recitation, our dhikr, our adhkar, all of the mawdah that we're about to recite, our remembrance of the Prophet, all these things, it has conditions. He said there's four parts. He said that dua has pillars, number one. Number two, it has wings. Number three, it has meanings, means, like asbab. And the fourth, he says it has moments. He said if it complies with the pillars, it becomes strong. You can't build a house upon a, a weak foundation. If it complies with its wings, then the dua will rise to the heavens. And if it complies with the times, it's accepted. And if it's complied with the, the, so there's a sacred time, like after the prayer or things like this, after the times of, 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 of uh, uh, there's, there's times where du'a is mustajab. There's a moment on Fridays, so on and so forth, sacred days. And if it complies with the means, then it's successful. So he says the pillars of supplication are having a presence of mind, to be focused in your mind. He says, and softness in your heart. And you must have humility and serenity, and a strong connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The wings, he says, is ikhlas, it's sincerity. In its moments, he says, it's the final part of the night. This is the time when the Prophet ﷺ arrived into this world. So this is the time where our dua is mustajab. And he said in the means, the sabab, the asbab, by which all of your duas are accepted, he said, is salawat upon the Prophet ﷺ. So we're going to begin our program. We're honored. We have Qari Amr, who is our Imam and our our leader in in our prayers. But there is a, that's the outward reality. Our inner reality is he's also our Imam of our souls. Of our souls. 
We have Amu Tarif, who is literally had, uh, has the ability of unlocking secrets of the heart, who is a direct descendant from our Prophet ﷺ through the master, our master, Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani. We have my dear brother and my dear friend, Sidi Hisham Mahmoud. He doesn't like to be called Sidi, he doesn't like to be called Shaykh, he doesn't like to be called Doctor. So we'll just call him Hisham. Hisham, we're good? I've known him for a long time, I can do that. Right? And we have Sidi Ibrahim al Nas, who has the ability of putting his state into our hearts. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open all of our hearts this evening. And today we also have, we're deeply honored. Wallahi ladeen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant Shaykh Ala long life and good health. And protect his family and protect all the ones that he loves. And may Allah give speedy recovery to all of our members of our community who are sick and who are going through tribulations. May Allah bring their relief to all of their situations. May Allah shower our khayr, shower his khayr upon those who have passed away in our community since last year. There are people here in our community that were with us on this gathering last year. They're not here. May the recitation that we have, inshallah ta'ala, be sent to them as well. Inshallah, we'll ask uh, to start our program, bi-idhnillah ta'ala. Bismillah. Before you start, see, the, I was thinking about what you just said. You made it very difficult on me to make my dua accepted. And I feel that everybody has the same feeling. So I want to do a shortcut for that. <laughs> so the shortcut, that's the easiest thing to do. You have to know that when you do Salah on Rasulullah that dua is accepted regardless of the status. Even a non-Muslim, you do Salah on Rasulullah is accepted. So what you do, you do one Salah on Rasulullah and one Salah on Rasulullah and in between put your request. And Allah is generous. He will accept both sides definitely. He will not put down the middle one. So this is the shortcut. Sfadda Sidi Ibrahim. Ya Rabbi salli ala Muhammad. Ya Rabbi salli ala wa sallim. Ya Rabbi salli ala Muhammad. Ya Rabbi salli ala wa sallim. يا ربي صل على محمد حبيبك الشافع المشفع يا ربي صل على محمد حبيبك الشافع المشفع يا ربي صل على محمد أعلى الورى رتبة وأرفع يا ربي صل على محمد أعلى الورى رتبة وأرفع يا ربي صل على محمد أسمى البرايا جاها وأوسع يا ربي صل على محمد أسمى البرايا جاهل وأوسع يا ربي صل على محمد واسلك بنا ربي خير من يا ربي صل على محمد واسلك بنا ربي خير من يا يا ربي صل على محمد وعافنا واشف كل يا ربي صل على محمد وعافنا واشف كل موجع يا ربي صل على محمد وأصلح القلب واعف وانفع يا ربي صل على محمد وأصلح القلب واعف وانفع يا ربي صل على محمد واكف المعادي واصرفه واردع يا ربي صل على محمد واكف المعادي واصرفه واردع يا ربي صل على محمد نحل في حصنك الممنع يا ربي صل على محمد نحل في حصنك الممنع 
يا ربي صلي على محمد ربي ارضى عنا رضاك نرفع يا ربي صلي على محمد ربي ارضى عنا رضاك نرفع يا ربي صلي على محمد واجعل لنا في الجنان مجمع يا ربي صلي على محمد واجعل لنا في الجنان مجمع يا ربي صلي على محمد رافق بنا خير خلقك اجمع يا ربي صلي على محمد رافق بنا خير خلقك اجمع يا ربي صلي على محمد يا ربي صلي عليه وسلم يا ربي صلي على محمد يا ربي صلي عليه وسلم سلم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك علي وعلى آله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن فتحنا لك فتحا مبينا ليغفر لك الله ما تقدم من ذنبك وما تأخر ويتم نعمته عليك ويتم نعمته عليك ويهديك صراطا مستقيما صلى الله عليه وينصرك الله نصرا عزيزا لقد جاءكم رسول من أن أنفسكم عزيز عليه ما عنتم عزيز عليه ما عنتم حريص عليكم بالمؤمنين رؤوف رحيم يا فإن تولوا فقل حسبي الله حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم يا عظيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك علي وعلى آله الحمد لله الذي هدانا بعبده المختار من دعانا صلى الله عليه إليه بالإذن وقد نادانا لبيك يا من دلنا وحدانا صلى الله عليه صلى عليك الله بارئك الذي بك يا مشفع خصنا وحدانا صلى الله عليه 
مع آلك الأطهار معدن سرك الأسماء فهم سفن النجاة حمانا صلى الله عليه وعلى صحابتك الكرام حماة دينك أصبحوا لولائه عنوانا صلى الله عليه والتابعين لهم بصدق ما حدا حاد المودة هيج الأشجانا صلى الله عليه والله ما ذكر الحبيب لذا المحب إلا وأضحى والها النشوانا صلى الله عليه أين المحبون الذين عليهم بذل النفوس مع النفائس هانا صلى الله عليه لا يسمعون بذكر طه المصطفى إلا به انتعشوا وأذهب رانا صلى الله عليه فاهتاجت الأرواح تشتاق اللقاء وتحن تسأل ربها الرضوانا صلى الله عليه حال المحبين كذا فاسمع إلى سير المشفع وارهف الآذانا صلى الله عليه وانصت إلى أوصاف طه المجتبى واحضر لقلبك يمتلئ وجدانا يا ربنا صل وسلم دائما على حبيبك من إليك دعانا اللهم صل وسلم وبارك علي وعلى آله الله 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 على نور رسول الله 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 على نور رسول الله 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 على نور رسول الله سيدنا النبي حنين سهل كده لين سيدنا النبي حنين سهل كده لين بين يا سيد بين حسن رسول الله 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 على نور رسول الله 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 على نور رسول الله طه اللي في المعنى حب بكم معنى طه اللي في المعنى معنا يا اللي انتو هنا معنا حي رسول الله 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 على نور رسول الله 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 على نور رسول الله امتى حتشوف عيني واحضن ايده بايدي امتى حتشوف عيني واحضن ايده بايدي اللي بحبك سيدي يا سيدي ومنى يا حيا الله 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 على نور رسول الله 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 على نور 
وأجمل منك لم تر قط عين الله الله وأطيب منك لم تلد النساء الله وأجمل منك لم تر قط عين الله الله وأطيب منك لم تلد النساء الله الله خلقت مبرأ من كل عيب خلقت مبرأ من كل عيب خلقت مبرأ من كل عيب كأنك قد خلقت كما تشاء قمر 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 سن النبي قمر الله الله وجميل 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 سن النبي وجميل كحيل الطرف حبيبي لو تراه الله ضحوك السن للعاشق رماه الله الله كحيل الطرف حبيبي لو تراه الله الله ضحوك السن للعاشق رماه الله الله بهي الطلع فالمولى اصطفاه بهي الطلع فالمولى اصطفاه وكل الكون انا رب نوري طه قمر 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 سيدنا النبي قمر الله الله وجميل 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 يا حبيبي جميل وجميل سيدنا النبي وجميل وكف المصطفى كالورد نادي الله الله وعطرها يبقى إذا مست يادي الله الله وعم نوالوها كل العباد وعم نوالوها كل العباد وعم نوالوها كل العباد حبيب الله يا خير البراء يا قمر 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 سيدنا النبي قمر الله الله وجميل 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 آه وجميل سيدنا النبي وجميل بحبك وبريدك واتمنى ابوس ايدك خدامك ومريدك يا جد الحسنين أحبك وبريدك 
واتمنى بوس ايدك خدامك ومريدك يا جد الحسنين حبيبي محمد حبيبي محمد ما فيش زي اتنين حب ساكن قلبي يزيد كل اتنين بحبك وبريدك واتمنى بوس ايدك خدامك ومريدك يا جد الحسنين جماله دلاله حبيبي متغطي بجلاله جماله دلاله حبيبي متغطي بجلاله وتقعد قباله تشوفهم الاثنين بحبك وبريدك واتمنى بوس ايدك خدامك ومريدك يا جد الحسنين انا نفسي ازورك وبأموري اشورك يا جمال محلى نورك يا جد الحسنين بحبك وبريدك واتمنى بوس ايدك خدامك ومريدك يا جد الحسنين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك علي وعلى اله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى اله نبانا الله فقال جاءكم نور فسبحان الذي انبانا والنور طه عبده من به في ذكره عاظم به منانا هو رحمة المولى تأمل قوله فليفره واخذوا به فرهانا مستمسكا من العروة الوثقى ومعتسما بحبل الله من أنشانا واستشعرا أنوار من قيل متى كنت نبيا قال آدم كانا بين التراب وبين ماء فاستبق من غفلة عندها وكن يقضانا وعبر إلى أسرار ربي لم يزل ينقله بين الخيار مصانا لم تفترق من شعبتين إلا أنا في خيرها حتى بروز أنا فأنا قد خرجت من لكاه لإلهي صانا طهره الله وما اختاره وما برك مثله إنسانا وبهبه وبذكره والنسر والتوقي رب العرش قد أعصانا يا ربنا صلي وسلم دائما على حبيبك من إليك دعانا اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه ولا اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه ولا آله صلى الله عليه اللہ ہی اللہ پڑھو اللہ ہی اللہ اللہ ہی اللہ پڑھو اللہ ہی اللہ جشن آمد رسول اللہ ہی اللہ جشن آمد رسول اللہ ہی اللہ بی بی آمنہ کے پھول اللہ ہی 
अल्लाह बीबी आमिना की फूल अल्लाह ही अल्लाह अल्लाह ही अल्लाह पढ़ो अल्लाह ही अल्लाह अल्लाह ही अल्लाह पढ़ो अल्लाह ही अल्लाह जशने आमदे रसूल अल्लाह ही अल्लाह बीबी आमिना की फूल अल्लाह ही अल्लाह जबकि सरकार तशरीफ लाने लगे पूरो गुल माँ भी खुशियाँ मनाने लगे हर तरफ नूर की रोशनी जा गई मुस्तफा क्या मिले जिंदगी मिल गई अहली माँ तेरी नोरियों के लिए दोनों आलम के रसूल अल्लाह है अल्लाह दोनों आलम के रसूल अल्लाह है अल्लाह बीबिया मिना के फूल अल्लाह है अल्लाह बीबिया मिना के फूल अल्लाह है अल्लाह चेहरा ही मुस्तफा जब दिखाया गया छुप गए तारे और चांद शर्मा गया चेहरा ए मुस्तफा जब दिखाया गया छुप गए तारे और चांद शर्मा गया आमिना देख कर मुस्कुराने लगी हब्बा मरियम भी खुशियाँ मनाने लगी आमिना भी भी सबसे ये कहने लगी दुआ हो गई कबूल अल्लाह है अल्लाह दुआ हो गई कबूल अल्लाह है अल्लाह बीबी आमिना के फूल अल्लाह है अल्लाह बीबी आमिना के अल्लाह है अल्लाह चेहरा ए मुस्तफा जब दिखाया गया छुप गए तारे और चांद शर्मा गया आमिना देख कर मुस्कुराने लगी हब्बा मरियम भी खुशियाँ मनाने लगी आमिना भी भी सबसे ये कहने लगी दुआ हो गई कबूल अल्लाह ही अल्लाह दुआ हो गई कबूल अल्लाह ही अल्लाह बीबी आमिना के फूल अल्लाह ही अल्लाह बीबी आमिना के फूल अल्लाह ही अल्लाह अल्लाह ही अल्लाह पढ़ो अल्लाह ही अल्लाह अल्लाह ही अल्लाह पढ़ो अल्लाह ही अल्लाह बीबी आमिना के फूल अल्लाह ही अल्लाह जश्न आमदे रसूल अल्लाह ही अल्लाह ना इलाहा इल्लाह अल्लाह ही अल्लाह बीबी आमिना के फूल अल्लाह ही अल्लाह जश्ने आमदे रसूल अल्लाह ही अल्लाह बीबी आमिना के फूल अल्लाह ही अल्लाह मसल्ली मसल्ली वो बारे काले इवाले We're going to narrate one dream. Uh, it's, it's narrated in the collection of Alama Imam Shawqan. So, Sheikh Rahim al Nasi just recited the beautiful verses of the last, the last section of Surah Tawbah. But in this, it's related that Abu, Abu Bakr ibn Muhammad an said that I was sitting with Abu Bakr ibn Mujahid. Allah of mercy, Rahimullah. When the Shaykh of all Shaykhs, Imam Shibli, who was a student of Imam Junaid, came into the gathering. 
Upon seeing this, Abu Bakr ibn Mujahid stood up and embraced him and he kissed him on his forehead. Now all the students of Abu Bakr ibn Mujahid, they said, Oh my master, you're behaving this way when you yourself consider Imam Shibli to be like a, a majdu, a person who's not fully with it in this world. And Abu Bakr ibn Mujahid said, I'm only doing what I saw the Prophet do. And then he related a dream. He said, I saw Imam Shibli attending a blessed gathering of the Prophet and the Prophet stood up and kissed him on the forehead. And when I asked the Prophet about this, he said, he recites the following verse after every fard prayer. And thereafter, he recites the following three times. Sallallahu alayka ya Muhammad. Sallallahu alayka ya Muhammad. Sallallahu alayka ya Muhammad. So, inshallah ta'ala, we should make a commitment after the fourth prayer to recite these last verses of Surah Tawbah and to say, Sallallahu alayka ya Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Inshallah we'll continue. I have a good news for you. <laughs> Three days ago, we were celebrating Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We were trying to be, we were happy of Habib Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That we belong to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's people overseas also, they're celebrating Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of them is so in his dream, and he sent me the dream. He said that he saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever is happy with me, I'm happy with him. Man fariha bina farihna bihi. And then he said, Ya Allah, Rasulullah made a dua. They are happy with me. Make me happy with them on the hawt of the day of judgment. Sallallahu ala Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Sallallahu ala Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Hadihi taibatu tabdu حولها العيسو بوارك أنت يا طيبة قاصدي يشتهي شمه بارك صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أما عذاب الأنغام جرسا مطربا شدوها سارك أنت ما تولي حبيب من يجاري في فخارك صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله على صلى الله عليه وسلم أنت في ساحة فضل فاغتنم خير نهارك أنت في ساحة فضل فاغتنم خير نهارك قف وجاهاً لي حبيب وارجوه فك عثارك صلى الله 
على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم قل له أنت حبيبي قل له أنت حبيبي قل له أنت حبيبي قل له أنت شفيعي قل له أنت طبيبي قل له أنت بشيري قل له أنت حبيبي قل له أنت حبيبي يا رسول الله داري وروى من كاسي وصال على يطف من أوارك صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله على محمد صلى الله وسلم أسأل الله تعالى أن يصلي ويبارك سيد الرسل جميعا مع آل من خيارك صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ثم أصحاب كرام ما بدا نشر عرارك كلما مد حغا أشتهي شم أبارك صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وأقبل السعد علينا والهنا من كل جانب أقبل السعد علينا والهنا من كل جانب فلان البشرى بسعد جاءنا من خير جانب صلوات الله تهدى صلوات الله تغشى أشرف الرسل الأطائب صلوات الله هي تغشى أشرف الرسل الأطائب وتعم الآل جمعا ما بدا نور الكواكب أقبل السعد علينا والهنا من كل جانب فلان البشرى بسعد فلان البشرى بسعد فلان البشرى بسعد جاءنا من خير جانب يا كريم الأصل لذنا بك في كل النوائب أنت ملج كل عاصين أنت ملج كل تائب صلوات الله هي تغشى أشرف الرسل الأطائب وتعم الآل جمعا ما بدا نور كواكب الحمد لله والشكر لله الحمد لله والشكر لله أزكى صلاتي وسلامي لرسول الله أزكى صلاتي وسلامي لرسول الله هذه المدينة فيها نبينا الله أو هذه المدينة الله فيها 
address us now. Before he addresses us, um, I asked him to give us a description of the Prophet and to tell us how we can get closer to him. And so inshallah he's going to illuminate our hearts and just in preparation I'm going to narrate two short uh, narrations, but one by Imam Muslim. And we're making the intention inshallah that with Shaykh Allah's description, all of our ills of our hearts would be cured. But Imam Muslim narrates that Sayyidina Abdullah, the freed servant of our mother, Bibi Asma bint Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anha, said, One day, Bibi Asma brought out for us a jubba, 
is decorated with a pattern and hemlines, and its collar and cuffs were lined with brocade. And she said, This is the jubbah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which was in the keeping of Bibi Aisha. And when she passed away, I took it. And the Prophet used to wear it. And now we wash it to treat those who complain of sickness and we are cured by it. And Imam Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, they both narrate this as part of the hadith of Hudaybiyah. There was one companion, at, the, at this time he actually was not a believer. He was a person who was from the de delegation of the Quraysh, who was opposing to the Prophet But as he came, he watched the Prophet He observed him, he studied him. And today we're going to listen to Shaykh Allah talk and we should study his every word. But he returned to Mecca and he said, and this person, his name was Urwa ibn Mas'ud. Again, this is in Bukhari and Muslim. People will ask, where is this from? He returned to his people in Mecca and he said, O people, by Allah, I have been sent to kings and to the Caesar and to the Khusru and to the Nagus. And by Allah, I never saw a king whose subjects venerated him like the companions of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, venerate Muhammad. By Allah, every time the Prophet وسلم, right now we take, we take mucinix in order to get phlegm out of our body. He said every time the Prophet وسلم, spat out phlegm, it landed in the hands of his followers. And they took it and they rubbed it into their faces and their skin. And when the Prophet ﷺ commanded them, they would obey instantly. And when he made wudu, they would fight each other in order to get the water that dripped off his body. And when he spoke, they lowered their voices. So I'm going to ask everyone to lower our voices because we're going to hear from Shaykh Allah. And they never ever looked directly at the Prophet out of reverence for him. And he told the Quraysh, this man, he's made you a proposal. So accept it. So inshallah, the Prophet ﷺ has made us a proposal. We should accept it. Inshallah ta'ala. Shaykh Allah. Open your heart. Open your heart to receive. Inshallah, out of mercy to myself and out of mercy to you, they say if you stand up Every half an hour to one hour when you sit down, after sitting down, you minimize your chances of having stroke, heart attack by 70 to 80 percent. So how about 10 times Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad while you stand up and stretch and then you sit down so you don't die on me here, inshallah. <coughs> Allahumma salli ala You like standing up so much, we can have the lecture while you're standing up. No problem. I first would like to uh, explain why I was not on stage with everyone else, because it could be misunderstood. Um, so yesterday I started feeling down and I'm coming down with a cold. So I didn't want to pass it to everyone around me. And my immune system is down with a cold, so I didn't want to take also anything back. Uh, I'm sorry, I shook both of your hands and I kissed your hands and uh, so too late, you know. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Jazakumullah Khair, Barakallahu Fikum. Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala wa stanna bi sunnatihi wa qtada bi hudah ila yawm al-deen. Allahumma ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. I would like to say 
all praises due to Allah, the first and the last, the inward and the outward, the beautiful, the magnificent, the majestic, the provider, the protector, the one who guides us all. Always we start with praising Allah Jalla Jalaluhu and you know in reality no one is there permanently except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we will all vanish and we'll all go just like our parents and grandparents and just like our children and grandchildren will also go so this is beautiful this is amazing this feels good how did we end up with this because of Allah so love Allah for everything that you enjoy in your life and these things that you don't enjoy the source of pain ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you meaning for that pain to give you patience to deal with that pain and consistency to give you reward so that pain is gone for nothing it's rewarded and at that point that pain will become a joy right so Brothers and sisters, um, we want to remember Allah and fill our hearts with the remembrance of Allah and say, thank you, Allah, thank you, Allah, thank you for everything. And thank you for the greatest ni'mah, which is the ni'mah of Islam, that is helping us to be positive and to be productive and to have a purpose and to have a meaning. We also thank you, Ya Allah, and we drive from your love, the love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is what the Prophet said, love Allah because of his blessings on you, love me for the love of Allah. Right? So who sent us Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Allah. Who sent us Al-Quran Al-Kareem, his word to communicate with him? Allah. Who sent us an Islam as a way of life, positive, productive, meaningful, focused, amazing way of life? Allah. Who created the heavens and the earth for us? Allah, who gave us a body, Allah, who made us smart, educated, make money, who gave us that money, Allah. So fill your heart with Allah's love and always reserve a place in your heart for Allah that no one else shares. That's the essence of Tawheed. That's La ilaha illallah. From that love comes another love, which is the love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And quickly, I just want to address two points. I see a lot of young people here, alhamdulillah, and the way I understand the meaning of the word young, anyone who's ready to change, to become a better person, fast, quick, with agility, is young. Who's young? The one who's willing to change, excited to change, want to change, want to become better, you're young, even if you're 60 or 80. Barakallahu feek. Very good news, huh? Who's old? The one who said, this is the way I am. Take it or leave it. I don't change. By Allah, you're old, even if you're 16 or 18. You know why we call old people old? Because they don't change. They're set in their own ways. Do you know what we have today? <laughs> old people, young and young people. <laughs> old, so get out of it. I look in your faces. I'm sorry. I see our old aunties and uncles. Their faces, zero wrinkles. I look at the young, 16, a thousand wrinkles. What's wrong? Change, right? It starts from here. So, I say to all of us, inshallah, let's approach this and, you know, understand that the idea of a role model. I see the young, people sometimes don't relate. Maybe we were lucky, we saw our parents, we grew up in a Muslim country, the Prophet, the Prophet, the Prophet, we are in love, we cry, we love. And our youngsters looking at us and they're not getting it. I'm going to, inshallah, help you to get it. What do you like? Do you like basketball? It's natural for us human beings to have role models. You never played basketball in your life. You see someone who plays basketball very well, you say, oh my God, I want to be like him. He becomes your role model. Or you already like basketball and then you look at someone who plays basketball very well, you say, I want to become like him. Who, who do you like? Stephen Carey? Kobe Bryant? My generation is Michael Jordan. Carl Malone. You know the mailman? Come on. 
but nobody knows these people. 1995 to 2000, they were playing amazing. And they're still some of the greatest players. Um, so your generation, having a role model is part of our psychology. Remember, when you were a kid, you're always looking at your mom and dad. Oh my God, when I grow up, I want to become like my dad. Oh my God, when I grow up, I want to become like my mom. It's part of the human psychology. You grew up a little bit, up to age 13, and then suddenly you start looking at your friends. Oh my God, I want to become like this friend. No, 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 like that friend. Oh, no, 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 like he's funny. Oh, she's amazing. Oh, she's a, she, I want to be like this. I want to be like this. Naturally, this is what happens to you without you thinking. You grow up and it depends what you want to do in life. You know, in high school, everybody's applying for colleges. You're like, I want to apply for college too. I'm not, I'm not missing anything because you have role models around you. People in college start getting snapped by companies. You're like, I want to be snatched by a company too. I want to become a doctor too. I want to become an engineer. I want to become a lawyer. I want to become a businessman. If you want to start up a company, you start, oh my God, I need to read the life of Steve Jobs. I need to read the life of Bill Gates. I need to read the life of Elon Musk. I need to read the life of this and that. Depends who's this. This is natural. This is part of being a human. You always will have a role model, whether you know it or not. The question is, all of these role models are in their small space, in their whatever you're trying but we human beings need an ultimate role model. You know what happened with Elon Musk? A couple of weeks ago, a month ago, he lied to make people buy the stocks. They caught him. They fired him from the board of directors, but they kept him the executive director, right? He's disputing it. You get it? He's an amazing startup company, but he lied. Do you want to be like that? So that's one thing that you want to get in your head. Why the Prophet ﷺ? Why did Allah send the messenger? Because it's part of being a human that you grow up always looking for role models. Whether you know it or not, whether you like it or not, whether you believe in it or not, this is what's happening in your life. You don't live in a vacuum. You, live, you don't live on a planet on your own. Number one. Are we clear? Are we cool? That's why we have what? A role model. Number two. Who's it today? Who's it? The Amazing role model. Someone who started from humble beginnings and made so much money, became very successful in the world of business. Right or wrong? And these people have an amazing life. Even though they are running a big company, they still have an amazing hobbies and they do amazing things. Like what? They are mountain hikers, rock climbers, cave campers, and they do yoga. This is it. Today, 2018, 2019. Who's it? Oh my God, these people have time to do all of this. And they're amazing in time management. And they make it big. And still when they make it big inside their company, they act humble. Like they're nobody. Oh my God, that makes people even more attracted to them. Who's it today? These people, when they eat, they eat different. They eat special. They have something called raw food diet. They have something called low calorie diet. They have something called, you know, eating one type of food diet. They have something, they go sometimes when they eat meat, they eat meat out. They're just amazing. They're just something different. They're amazing. And these people, like they're, they do different things and, and, they are, and then they're, they have ideas. And then when they make a lot of money, then they go and make some charity like Bill Gates and all of that. Everything I said right now is nothing but a description of Prophet Muhammad. Who's the mountain hiker, rock climber, cave camper? That's the mountain of Hira right there. Today, with stairs, it takes you an hour with breaks to go to Ghar Hira. Take the stairs out. Good luck reaching up there. Who's the one that his wife said, from the crescent to the crescent to the crescent, we never lit a fire to cook food. They still were eating, but they were not eating cooked food. You know what you call that? Raw food diet. You know what's the problem? We're not impressed by our own prophet. We're impressed by everything. Any magazine, you pick it up. This diet, oh my God, this is I want to try that one. But we're not impressed with our own prophet. Who's the one who was doing meditation when no one else was doing meditation? The prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa First ibadah in Islam. Who's the one that connected with nature? And, and nature spoke to him and he spoke to nature. You know the rock in Mecca? The Prophet is 10, 12 years old. Assalamu alaikum, ya Rasulullah. He used to get scared and run away. A rock saying assalamu alaikum. What is it? What's assalamu alaikum? Still, Islam is not revealed. Right? Who's the one that the tree covers him when he sits down? He's talking to nature and nature is talking to him. 
get impressed by your own prophet. Enough is enough. We're impressed by everyone else except our own prophet Who's the one who has an amazing time management to be the leader, the military leader, the people leader, but yet have time to come to the masjid, live next to the masjid, become accessible to people and listen to them? The Prophet Before he gives khutbah al Jum'ah, someone comes and says, I want to talk to you, Rasulullah. He stops the khutbah, he sits down, he talks to the man. Before he leads Salat al-Isha, someone comes and says, Ya Rasulullah, I want to talk to you. He takes him back, he speaks to him until midnight. While people are waiting, they sat down, they were waiting. They will never rush the Prophet. They were looking, 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 then they sat down. Then they were looking, 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 then they sat down. And then they fell asleep. And then they woke up. And then the Prophet led Salat al-Isha. Who has time? To talk to the old and to the young. Who was always humble and stayed humble. And he told people, don't treat me like people treat their kings. I am not a king. I am Allah's servant and slave and prophet and a messenger. Do not stand up to me. When I come, when I find an, old, an open place, let me sit in the open place. Right? Yes, sometimes people stood up to him and that happened. But he didn't want it to become a habit. Yes, he allowed people to kiss his hand and kiss his feet. When he was coming back from Ta'if, Adas, he kissed the hand of the Prophet and went down to his feet and kissed it. But he did not make that all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. He wanted to teach people, I am one of you and you are of me. But I am the messenger of Allah and I am here as a rahmah for you. So who stayed humble to the last moment? That's the Prophet So be impressed with your own role model. Because whatever is it today, who started with being a shepherd from humble beginnings and he became a businessman and made a lot of money. And here is where I want to start my topic here. He was called As-Sadiq Al-Ameen. The truthful, the honest, and the trustworthy. They gave me the part, the truthful, and the honest. Let me tell you something. Let's get this clear. If there was another one or two or three or four or five people in the market that were also truthful and trustworthy, they would have not called the Prophet that. You only call someone the truthful trustworthy, that means he's the only one. Because it will become confusing. The truthful and the trustworthy, which one? Muhammad or Ahmad or Khalid or Al-Walid, which trustworthy? No, no, no. When you call someone the Al-Sadiq al the Arab knows when they talk what they're saying. The one. So I want you to think with me. You're surrounded by cheaters and liars. You're the only one who's telling the truth. In the world of business, is that an advantage or disadvantage? It's a disadvantage because everyone is lying and cheating. You're the one who's telling the truth. Now I want you to think with me and get impressed. How smart does the Prophet have to be to double, triple, and quadruple the Prophet for Khadija? While he's a Sadiq al Amin in the middle of flyers. Amazing businessman. Amazing businessman. Amazing businessman. The problem is we're not impressed. And everything else impresses us. So we want to come back to our roots and we want to be impressed. So a Sadiq al Amin. I was like looking, you know, subhanAllah. Today is the time for me, I, myself, individuality, this and that. Islam and the prophets and the messengers is anything but selfishness and individuality. That's why from Ibrahim alayhi salam, Allah tells him, Ya Ibrahim, I will give you words. Ibrahim fulfilled the words, yani the commandments of Allah. So Allah said, I will make you to mankind imama. Immediately Ibrahim said, how about my children? Allah said, the oppressors will not get my covenant. But those who make choices like you, I will give them the covenant. I will, they will be honorable in my eyes. So Allah grants Ibrahim, Ismail, and Ishaq. Ismail comes first. What is the description of Ismail in the Quran? Are you, are you ready? This will explain it. It runs in the blood. وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِسْمَعِيلِ Mention in the book Ismail. إِنَّهُ كَانَ صَادِقَ الْوَعْدِ he used to fulfill and be truthful to his promises. And he was a messenger and a prophet. Who was called As Sadiq Al Amin before As Sadiq Al Amin? Ismail, the son of Ibrahim, the father of Muhammad. Inna Hukana, Sadiq Al Wadi, Wakana, Rasul Al Nabiya. 
It's unbelievable. This Ismail alayhi salam and Ibrahim had a vision. It's all about starting with yourself, then your family, then the spiritual family. So, there is a special place for Ibrahim and his al. Who's his al? Ismail and Ishaq. Whose children? Ismail has 12 children. Do you know about the 12 children of Ismail? You only know about the 12 children of Ya'qub alayhi salam. As a matter of fact, some of the Mufassireen called Al-Asbat the children of Ismail, not the children of Ya'qub. You understand? But whether they're the children of Ya'qub or the children of Ismail, we, we love them all. Whatever, we don't have this discrimination or this problem. Whether it's Muhammad وسلم, or Musa or Isa, we love them all, we believe in them all. We don't have that problem. Oh, we don't believe in that. No, no, we actually believe in that. But I'm just giving you an understanding. The children, it's about the family. Sometimes people will not listen to you. You're left with your own family. If you're a good example, your family will listen to you. So now, this Ismail alayhi salam and the choices that Ibrahim made and Ismail made and the children of Ismail one after another made were amazing choices. You want me to give you one example of their choices? I'll tell you one example. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Allah kept on moving me from honorable backs of men to honorable women, wombs of women. There was no zina, there was no rape, there was no sifah, there was no adultery, there was no fornication. Do you know what that means? That means every father in the genealogy of the Prophet ﷺ made a choice. And we're talking about times that there was no Prophet. Yani before Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, the last Prophet was Jesus. Where was Jesus? Isa alayhi salam. In Jerusalem, not in Mecca. The last prophet that came to these people, they say the Anbiya of the Arab are five. Ismail alayhi salam, right? Shu'aib alayhi salam, right? Hud alayhi salam, Salih alayhi salam, and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. But when was the last? But even though no prophet in this, the fitra is strong, the choices are right, and he's what? And they made a choice to always go for halal. One example, what? difference does it make for you to make a choice today what impact it has on you and on your children to the day of judgment do you choose halal your children will choose halal you choose haram your children will choose haram and in a sense we're so honored and so honored do you know what allah called us allah called us the children of ibrahim do you know what allah called ibrahim your father is ibrahim your father he's not your biological father but he's your spiritual father Millata abikum Ibrahim. This deen is the millah, the way of life, the conviction of your father Ibrahim. And this Ibrahim, he's the one who named you Muslims. Look, Ibrahim is thinking of those who? You and I, the Muslims. The Muslims are thinking of who? Ibrahim. What's the gap? Only a few thousand years. Only four or five thousand years. Yes. And from Jesus, two thousand. Jesus above, probably six thousand years, the gap between us and Ibrahim. But the connection is strong as if it is your father. Your father, that's Ibrahim. So Allah Azza wa Jal gave the children of Ibrahim special honor, the children of Muhammad وسلم, special honor. But Allah, after giving Alul Bayt their special honor, the blood of the Prophet وسلم, Allah said, now there is the Alul Bayt in blood, and then there is the followers and the Ummah, and they are the family, and Ibrahim is your father, Ismail is your father, Muhammad وسلم, is your father, so be proud and be impressed. as sadiq people take the honest. What I found out, is that when people say as al Amin, they're talking about how the Prophet ﷺ was honest and truthful with the others. But I'm going to tell you something. That's only a reflection of him being honest and truthful with himself. Please do not forget that. Honesty with others is only a reflection of honesty with yourself. So I want you to think deep. Are you honest with yourself or not? Do you know what makes a person want to change? When they're honest with themselves. Do you know what makes a person doesn't want to change? When they think they're perfect. Do you know what's the mother of all honesty? La ilaha illallah. Do you know what you're saying? You're saying I'm not God. 
But you say, Sheikh, I never said I am God. Yeah, you never said it like that. But let me tell you something. One, you think you are in control. And when things don't go your way, you go upset. You think you're God. But you don't say I am God. You have expectations from life and expectations from people and expectations from God. And when God and people and life does not fulfill your expectations, you go mad and upset. You never said I'm God, but you act like one. You say, I am perfect. He has a problem. She has a problem. And he has a problem. He has a problem. He has a problem. But I have no problem. Who's perfect? Allah. You're valuable. You're not infallible. You're a sinner. كُلُّ بَنِي آدَمَ خَطَّى So we, the mother of all honesty, is لا إله إلا الله. I am not God. Allah is God and I am His Abd. So, if I am not God and I'm a human and I am, I make mistakes, then now, what's next? What's next is to be honest with myself. Where do I need to change? What's wrong with me? How can I transform? Brothers and sisters, Islam came to make that transformation. This sadaq, to be honest with yourself. Do you know what happens to people? Allah warned us in the Quran. And it's the most scary thing to me, at least. It's very scary. It's when you, between you and yourself, there is a veil. And between you and yourself, you're lying to yourself. You say, nobody can lie to himself. Yes, you can lie to yourself. And yes, you can believe your own lies. Do you know when Allah made the longest qasam in the Quran? وَالشَّمْسِ وَضُحَاهَا وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا تَلَاهَا وَالنَّهَارِ إِذَا جَلَّاهَا وَالْلَيْلِ إِذَا يَغْشَاهَا وَالسَّمَاءِ وَمَا بَنَاهَا وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا طَحَاهَا وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا Longest qasam in the Quran, only Allah to talk about your nafs. And Allah said, people, the way they deal with their nafs is one of two ways. Either they find what's wrong and they start washing and cleaning and that's called honesty. Or, very interesting word that Allah used, or people hide themselves. وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ Well, why hide? It, it mind-boggling. Why hide? Do you know what? Why hide? Because the mother of all problems, the opposite of tazkiyah is you're looking at your heart and saying, there's nothing wrong with me. There's nothing. <gasps> there's nothing wrong with me. There's... <gasps> no, no, no. I'm okay. I'm okay. She's wrong. He's wrong. He... Then you get scared from facing yourself and your darkest places, so you never change. Now, you failed at being honest and truthful with yourself. You think you're going to be honest and truthful with the people? It's not going to happen. So that's why the gist of Islam is that transformation, the gist of Islam and the gist of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa I want to mention one thing. I was mentioning it like 10, 15 years ago and then this Jewish lady from Seattle, I keep on forgetting her name, she did a TED talk and she said something I'm like, wow, I should have been on TED talk. <laughs> you know what it is? I will just show one moment of honesty. People don't pay attention to this, but this is one of the proofs that the Prophet ﷺ did not make up this stuff. You're going to the cave. You're writing poem. You're writing your ideas. You're writing your reflection. You're waiting for it to be done, 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 done. Done! You come home after five years. Guess what, Khadija? We're done. I have it. I'm ready. I'm prepared. This is Kadhab, liar. He wrote it and he says God gave it to him. Do you know how the Prophet came back to Khadija? Frightened, shaken, because he's honest. Because he would not pretend and he would not lie about something. He was not looking for, I want to become great. But you know in that humbleness, you know that in that self-honesty, you know that in that is all greatness. That's the hardest thing to you. You know, I'll tell you something. When you talk to people, at least in my experience, hello, assalamu alaikum, how are you? I'll kiss your head, you kiss my head, I'll kiss your hand, you kiss my hand, everything. We're happy. The second you ask people to change, they walk away. They can't handle it. The second you give an advice and you say, Brother, I think you need to change. Do you have an advice for me? Because I will take any advice, inshallah. But I have an advice for you. Would you change this and this and that? That's when people run away. And you know why 100 people in Mecca believed out of 10,000 people? 
Do you know what was the success rate of the Prophet ﷺ? 1%. Do I need to finish the sentence? I don't need to finish it. You make the calculation, what's the other percentage? Do you know why? Because people do not want to change. And if you don't want to transform and change slowly but surely, you will live and die talking about Allah is beautiful. Prophet is beautiful. Islam is beautiful. The Quran is amazing. The Sunnah is great. And you are not amazing. And you are ugly. And you are disgusting. <laughs> but you keep on talking. And you think, you think all what Allah wants from you is to say, Allah is beautiful. The message is beautiful. The Quran is beautiful. Okay, khalas, I'm done. <laughs> now I can go and do my thing. They had no problem, people of Mecca had no problem with generations before the Prophet. There was always one in a generation, two in a generation, three in a generation. They used to call him Al-Ahnaf, the people who did not worship the idols. They just worshipped one God. Quraysh, it never bothered him. Muhammad believes in one God, it doesn't bother him. But when Muhammad وسلم, moved from being Salih to Muslih, now we have a problem. From righteous to wanting righteousness for everybody and demanding change, now we're going to fight Muhammad. And you know what happened? They changed from a sadiq, they called him kathib. Can you believe that? You know, people attack the Prophet ﷺ and Muslims go mad. Do you know <laughs> the Quran preserved all the attacks on the Prophet and answered them? They called the Prophet kathab, liar. Ashir makes up stuff, not only lies, he makes up stuff. Kahin, monk, sahir, magician, majnoon, crazy. Shair, poet. Do you know all that, what happened? Before that, before he said, I'm a prophet, a messenger, I demand change from you. They came to him, they said, okay, one God, fine. How about we worship your God one God, one year, and you worship our gods one year. Can you just stop? Plus, can you please explain to us, and Allah mentioned this with Shu'aib also, how in the world believing in one God has to do with our social status, economical status, and dealings, political status? How, what does believing in one God have to do with how I treat my wife, or how I treat my husband, or how I treat my daughter, or how I treat my slave, or how I treat my money, or how I charge interest, or how I fight? What does it have to do? Let God be with God. God is in the house. God is in the Kaaba. Separation between life and faith. The Prophet ﷺ said, I will not take your offer. So that's why, brothers and sisters, the fact that you were born and raised Muslim shall not give you too much comfort. Because Islam, alhamdulillah, it's inherited, but it demands from you change. And if you want to know how hard is change, you know what we are all here? Do you know what's our wish? Any Muslim, weak in faith, strong in faith. Do you know what's his wish? To meet the Prophet And do whatever you want after that. You want to kiss his hand, kiss his feet, kiss his head, hug him, do like the Sahabi. Oh, you hurt me. Can I, I want to hurt you back. The Prophet exposes his side and he goes and kisses the side of the Prophet He said, I heard that when someone's skin touches your skin, that skin is forbidden from hellfire. In the state of Iman, obviously. Right? So, I want you to think of this. Imagine seeing the Prophet for 13 years in Mecca and not wanting to believe in him. You know why? Because people don't want to change. They don't want to transform. They don't want to become. Change starts with honesty with yourself. That will translate into honesty with others that will translate into honesty with Allah and that will translate into honesty with any of his creation. It is, it's unbelievable. And honest people are so rare in the world, you will be noticed that you're honest. So brothers and sisters, I love to like, mashallah, there is so much beauty in this. The brother here has an amazing voice, mashaAllah. Some people, Allah give them beautiful faces. Some people, Allah give them beautiful bodies. Some people, Allah give them beautiful voice. Some people, Allah give them beautiful mind. Some people, Allah give them beautiful knowledge. Some people, Allah give them beautiful akhlaq. Allah distributes the rizq between the ibad. Everybody has his own strength. May Allah bless 
there's a lot of beauty, but let's be grounded again. And let's say, I want to try and start my journey of transformation. I don't want to meet the Prophet وسلم, on the day of judgment. And he says, you knew what I wanted from you. You knew my legacy. You knew what made me happy. Why didn't you do it? Why did you keep on talking about me, talking about me, talking about me, talking about me? But when it came to you embodying me and for people to see me through you, you refused that. Why? Are you ready to answer that? Or you want to keep on fooling around and beating around the bush and saying tomorrow and not me. And I'm not a sheikh and I'm not an imam and I'm not a scholar. I'm not a alima, I'm not sheikha, I'm not imama, I'm not... I don't know what you're saying to yourself. I don't know what shaitan is saying to you. I don't know what your nafs is saying to you. But enough is enough. The Prophet said, people will come to my basin, to my lake. And I want to give them a cup from my hand. If you drink from that cup, you will never feel thirsty ever again. Before you enter Jannah, before you enter Jannah, you will lose the sense of thirst. Done. And I'm ready to give it to them. And some angels come and move them away from me. And they say, they did not follow you. They did ugly things after you. Do you want to be that one? So brothers and sisters, let's mix this beauty and this knowledge with the niya. I want to embody the Prophet ﷺ. I want, to embody. I want people to say, Allah is beautiful because of these people. Islam is amazing because of these people. Because of you. The Prophet is amazing because of you. Today, reality check. Internet. Instant messages. Instant. Before that, what was there? The internet. Before that, what was there? TV. Before that, what was there? Radio. Before that, what was there? Cars. Before that, what was there? Horses. So I want you to go in your mind and take... Instant messaging, take it out. Then take internet out, no more internet in the world. Then take TV out, then take radio out, then take the cars and the trains. And before the industrial revolution, we're ending up with what? With horses. Islam spread in 30 years from the day the Prophet died, وسلم, reached from China to Morocco. You know, brothers here, Indians, Pakistanis, Chinese. Do you know that your grandparents entered Islam and they had absolutely no clue what the Sahaba were talking about? Because they didn't speak their language. They just looked at them and they were so impressed. Not by their lectures. They didn't even speak Arabic. But they were impressed Taken, taken, completely taken, that your grandparents became Muslim because of that. Now, put back everything else with instant messaging. We cannot do 1% of what these people did without internet, without airplanes, without TV, without all of this. We keep on posting on YouTube. We keep on doing. The world will change. The world will change when a few people will decide to change. Then Allah will make it roll. You understand? So, bro brothers and sisters, I, you know, there's so many angles to as sadiq al amin I want to be mindful of the time of the other speakers. Barakallahu feekum. And, 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 you know, be mindful. Allah is zikum khair. Barakallahu feekum. But, yani, look at this. Consider this. We are at the time of self-change, self-motivation. Change yourself. Just, subhanallah. You are at a time where everyone demanding change from you to become better at your company, better at making money, better at this, better as a husband, better. And people will pay $6,000 plus the tickets to go to Fiji to meet, what's the name of the guy? Who has an in Fiji? Uh, huh? Tony Robbins. $6,000 one weekend plus airfare to meet Tony Robbins to sit with him for one week so that he tells them what? Believe in yourself. I'll charge you 600 for free, for free. And what we're saying, believe in Allah, make your intention. You can do it. You can do it. You were made to do it. You have mind, heart, soul, nafs, body. You were made to do it. 
You are qualified to do it. This stuff is easy for you. Allah will never burden you with something that you cannot bear. But you keep on selling yourself. I cannot do it. I cannot change. Shaitan keeps on telling you, later, later, later. People tell you, come on, man. Khalas, tonight, you, you don't, tomorrow you change. Just Let's have a party right now. And between bad friends and bad nafs and bad shaitan and bad temptation of life, day after day passes and nothing is happening. So I believe our masajid are open for transformation. And I want to end with this. Alhamdulillah, I like this. We're all together, this and that. Talk, have good friends, transform. Because the greatest teacher ever lived was Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu The greatest students were Alu Baytihil Abhar and the Sahaba Al-Kiram. But yet, we don't refer to them as the great teacher and the great students. We don't refer to them like that. It's very interesting. We refer to them as the messenger of Allah. This is the messenger of Allah and his companions and his friendships. Do you know what's the method of learning? Don't overwhelm yourself. Find the companion, find the teacher, find someone, find the janitor, because Allah sometimes teaches you from where you do not expect teaching. Humble yourself, learn from squirrels, learn from trees, learn from stuff around you that Allah created, and step by step, slowly but surely, slowly but surely, become a friend of a cat, become a friend of a tree, become a friend of the Quran, become a friend of the Prophet, become a friend of Allah. It's unbelievable. Islam sets the stage, you are Abdullah. Once you get that straight in your head, Allah says, I am your sahib. <gasps> I never heard that. Where do you get this stuff, Shaykh, from? I'll tell you where I get it. I got it from the dua of the Prophet ﷺ. When you travel, do you know what you say? Allahumma anta sahibu fi safar. Ya Allah, you are my sahib in my traveling. You want a relationship with Allah? Today people impress us. Muslims are leaving stuff. It's not a religion. It's a relationship. <sighs> Whoa. No, it's a religion and a relationship. Both. You understand? Allah is your sahib. Quran is your sahib. The Prophet ﷺ said, اِقْرَأُوا الْقُرْآنِ فَإِنَّهُ يَأْتِي الْيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ شَفِيعًا لِأَصْحَابِهِ Read Quran for the Quran comes as and intercedes on your behalf for his friends. Become the friend of the Quran. Become the friend of the Prophet ﷺ. It's not too late. We are his friends and his ahbab, as you know. So, but start your journey. The journey starts with, are you honest? With yourself. Are you truthful with yourself? Or you think you are Mr. or Mrs. Perfect? Or you think there is nothing wrong with you? Or you think you don't need change? Or you think it's all right? It doesn't work like that. And that honesty will translate in your economics, in your decisions, in your family, with everyone else. And the king of, you know, Hercules was very smart. He called Abu Sufyan. Abu Sufyan was not a Muslim at that time. People, he told him, stand behind him. And if he lies, tell me. Did this man, before he say he's the messenger of God, did he lie? Did he lie? They said, no. Abu Sufyan said, no, he didn't lie. We used to call him the truthful, the trustworthy. He looked at him and he said, do you think someone will not lie to people, but will lie to God? <laughs> you know, kings, you know, they have some brains, right? They have some politics. They know where's the ins and outs of things. So, please, are you excited about changing? Are you excited? They fed you dinner, for God's sake. You have a thousand calories over what you need. Are you excited about becoming sadiq with yourself? Do you want to change? Ya Allah, help us to change, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Make better people out of ourselves, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Make us leaders to ourselves, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Make us followers of your Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Make us a copy of him, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Make us from the people who honor your name, honor the name of your messenger, and honor the name of your deen. Ya Allah, every day make us better people, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And instill in us your love. The love of your messenger, the love of Alu Baytihi al Abhar, and the love of his companions, and the love of the people who follow him to the last day. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. I'm about to collapse from tiredness. Jazakumullah khair, barakallah fikum. And again, 
I feel this, I'm not disrespecting anyone, but please allow me to go and rest. Allah is zikr khair. Barakallahu feekum. So insha'Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Jazakallah Sayyidi, Shaykh Ala Al-Bakri, Jazakallah Khair. Inshallah, all of us will be committed, Inshallah. Uh, do you know why the first one to enter Jannah is... Do you know who is the first one to enter Jannah? Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why? Think about it. Really, think about it. Why he is the first one to enter Jannah? Imagine the best design ever of a village or a, or, 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 a, or a structure that's been done with amazing things in it. But there is a switch to turn the light in it, to turn electricity in it, so everything will function. Jannah will not be Jannah until the moment Rasulullah will enter Jannah and the switch happened. That's why nobody else will enter before that. The same way, when we enter our grave, all of us, we know that, La ilaha illallah. But look, the second question, it didn't say, who's your prophet? It said, what do you say of this man? And you will see him, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. That's the switch of the grave. If you know who is, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, then the switch to open, the door to paradise. If somebody doesn't know that, the switch will open to the hellfire. Everything, anything belonging to Rasulullah is blessed, is holy, muqaddas. What's the best water ever on earth? Or any, 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 anywhere, on the whole creation. People they say zamzam, people they say this water, kawthar, no. The water that came from the fingers of Rasulullah when he put his, his blessed hand in the water and he, the water came as a spring, the whole army got the water from Rasulullah Where is the, the most holy point on the whole creation? People, they say Kaaba. People, they say Bayt al-Ma'mur. They say Mecca. They say uh, uh, Al-Kursi. Oh, subhanAllah. Al-Arsh. There's something more high. Muqaddas Akhtar. The scholar, they say, the soil that touches Rasulullah his grave is the highest. This is the design of Allah. Allah loves Sayyidina Muhammad Out of this love, made anything connected to him is cured. Is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My heart, I want it to be beloved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Should be touched by Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi Should be touched by Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa By mentioning him sallallahu alayhi wa By doing salawat on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa That's our goal. That's our target. As Qal Sayyidi Qari Umar in the, in the Salat al-Isha second rak'ah, he said in the Quran, Allah and the angel do salat on you to take you from darkness put you in light. How do I get Allah and the angel to do salat on me? If I do one salat on Allah, Allah will do ten on me. Imagine what's happened. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves Rasulullah. Use this power to make your heart an amazing heart. And that's what Sidi Shihala said, the change in the heart. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik alayhi wa ala alayhi. Hada wa qad nashar al-ilahu aduhu fil-budbi bayyana halana dibiyana. 
اخذ ميثاق النبيين لما اتيتكم من حكمه احسانا وجاءكم رسولنا لتؤمنون وتنصرون وتصبحون عابانا قد بشروا اقوامهم بالمصطفى عاد بذلك رتبه ومكانا فهو ان جاء الاخير مقدم يمشو تحت لباء من نادانا يا امه الاسلام اول شافع ومشفع انا قد لا ادبانا صلى الله عليه حتى انا ترفع وصلت عطا وقل يسمع لقولك نجم فخر غبانا صلى الله عليه ولواء حمد الله جل بيدي ولا اولا هادي انا الجنان صلى الله عليه واكرم الخلق على الله انا فلقد حباك الله منه هنانا صلى الله عليه ولا سوف يعديك فترضى جل من معت تقاصر عن اطاه نهانا بالله كر ذكر واسمي محمد كيما تزيها عن القلوب الرانا يا ربنا صلي وسلم دائما على حبيبك من اليك دعانا اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى اله يا مصطفى يا مجتبى يا مصطفى يا مجتبى اهلا وسهلا مرحبا يا مصطفى يا مجتبى اهلا وسهلا مرحبا زمين وزمان تمہارے لیے مکین و مکان تمہارے لیے زمین و زمان تمہارے لیے مکین و مکان تمہارے لیے چنین و چنا تمہارے لیے بنے سب جہاں تمہارے لیے یا مصطفی یا مجتبا اہل و سہل مرحبا یا مصطفی یا مجتبا اہل و سہل مرحبا دہن میں صبح تمہارے لیے بدن میں ہے جان تمہارے لیے دہن میں صبح تمہارے لیے بدن میں ہے جان تمہارے لیے ہم آئے یہاں تمہارے لیے اٹھے بھی وہاں تمہارے لیے یا مصطفی یا مجتبا اہلن و سہلن مرحبا یا مصطفی یا مجتبا اہلن و سہلن مرحبا نہ روح امی نہ عرش بری نہ لوح مبی کوئی بھی کہیں نہ روح امی نہ عرش بری نہ لوح مبی کوئی بھی کہیں خبر ہی نہیں جو رمز کھولے ازل کی نہاں تمہارے لیے یا مصطفی یا مجتبا اہلا و سہلا مرحبا یا مصطفی یا مجتبا اہلا و سہلا مرحبا سبا وہ چلے کے باغ کھلے اور پھول کھلے اور دن ہو بھلے سا 
सबाव चले के बाग खिले और फूल खिले और दिन हो भले देवा के तले सना में खुले रजा की जुबा तुम्हारे लिए या मुस्तफा या मुझतबा पर हबा मुस्तफा या मुझतबा ظهر الدين المؤياد بظهور الهدي أحمد ظهر الدين المؤياد بظهور الهدي أحمد يا هنانا بمحمد ذلك الفضل من الله خص بالسبع المثاني وحوالوط فالمعاني ما له في الخلق ثاني وعليه أنزل الله يا هنانا 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 من مكة لما ظهر لأجله شط القمر وافتخرت آل مضار به على كل الأنام يا هنانا 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 ظهر الدين المؤيد بظهور الهدي أحمد ظهر الدين المؤيد بظهور هدي أحمد يا هنانا بمحمد ذلك الفضل من الله يا هنانا 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 أطيب العالم خلقا وأجل الناس خلقا أطيب العالم خلقا وأجل الناس خلقا ذكره غربا وشرقا سير والحمد لله يا هنانا يا هنانا يا هنانا يا هنانا يا هنانا يا هنانا يا هنانا
صلوا على خير الأنامي المصطفى بدر التمام صلوا عليه وسلموا يشفع لنا يوم الزحام يا هنانا ظهر الدين مؤيد بظهوره هدي أحمد يا هنانا بمحمد ذلك الفضل من الله يا هنانا 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 So we're going to continue بإذن الله in the Mawlid and the next chapter inshallah ta'ala will have recitation of the salam. If everyone could please remain for a few minutes after the salam, Sidi Hisham is going to speak, uh, just address us about how we can increase our trust in the Prophet And then uh, we'll end with our dua, inshallah, after he's finished. So please, after the salam, everyone stay. A lot of people uh, tend to leave. We're just trying to make sure that doesn't happen. اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله صلى الله عليه لما دنا وقت البروز لأحمد عن إذن من ما شاءه قد كان حملت به الأم الأمينة بنت وهب من لها أعلى الإله مكانا من والد المختار عبد الله بن عبد المطلب رأى البرهان قد كان يغمر نور طه وجهه وسرى إلى الابن المصون عيانا وهو ابن هاشم الكريم الشهم بن عبد مناف بن قصي كان والده يدعى حكيما شأنه قد اعتلى أعزز بذلك شانا واحفظ أصول المصطفى حتى ترى في سلسلات أصوله عدنانا فهناك قف علم برفعه إلى اسماعيل كان للأب معوانا وحينما حملت به آمنة لم تشك شيئا يأخذ النسوانا وبها أحاط اللطف من رب السماء أقصى الأذى والهم والأحزانا ورأت كما قد جاء ما علمت به أن المهيمن شرف الأكوانا بالطهر من في بطنها فاستبشرت ودن المخاض فأترعت رضوانا سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله الله أكبر سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله الله أكبر سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله الله أكبر سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله الله أكبر لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم في كل لحظة أبدا عدد خلقه ورضا نفسي وزنة عرشي ومداد الكلمات وتجلت الأنوار من كل الجهات فوقت ميلاد المشفع حانا صلى الله عليه وقبيل فجر أبرزت شمس الهدى ظهر الحبيب مكرما ومصانا صلى الله على محمد 
صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا نبي سلام عليك يا رسول سلام عليك يا حبيب سلام عليك يا رسول الله صلوات الله عليك يا نبي سلام عليك يا رسول سلام عليك يا حبيب سلام عليك يا رسول الله صلوات الله عليك أبرز الله المشفع صاحب قدر المرفع وملا نور النوى برسول الله عما كل الكون أجمع يا نبي سلام عليك يا رسول سلام عليك يا حبيب سلام عليك يا رسول الله صلوات الله عليك نكس أصنام شرك وبنا الشرك تصدى ودنا وقت الهداية برسول الله وحما الكفر تزعزع يا نبي سلام عليك يا رسول سلام عليك يا حبيب سلام عليك يا رسول الله صلوات الله عليك مرحبا أهلا وسهلا بك يا ذا القدر الأرفا يا إمام أهل الرسالة يا رسول الله من به آفات تدفع يا نبي سلام عليك يا رسول سلام عليك يا حبيب سلام عليك يا رسول الله سلام الله عليك أنت في الحشر ما نذل لك كل الخلق تفزع ويناد لا ترى ما يا رسول الله قدها من هولنا فضا يا نبي سلام عليك يا رسول سلام عليك يا حبيب سلام عليك يا رسول الله صلوا الله على مرحبا مرحبا يا نور عيني مرحبا مرحبا جد الحسين مرحبا فلها أنت فتسجد مرحبا 
واتونا تشفعت شفع مرحبا مرحبا يا نور عيني مرحبا مرحبا جد الحسين مرحبا فعليك الله صلى مرحبا ما بدا النور وشعشع مرحبا ما يا نور عيني مرحبا مرحبا جد الحسين مرحبا وبك الرحمن نسأل يا الله وإله العرش يسمع مرحبا مرحبا يا نور عيني مرحبا مرحبا جد الحسين ربي فاغفر لي ذنوبي يا الله ببركة الهادي المشفع يا الله ربي فاغفر لي ذنوبي يا الله ببركة الهادي المشفع يا يا عظيم المن يا رب يا الله شملنا بالمصطفى اجمع يا الله ربي فاغفر لي ذنوبي يا الله ببركة الهادي المشفع يا الله وفي فانظر إلينا يا الله واعطنا بكل مطمع يا الله ربي فاغفر لي ذنوبي يا الله ببركة الهادي المشفع يا الله واكفنا كل البلايا يا الله وادفع الآفات يا الله ربي فاغفر لي ذنوبي يا الله ببركة الهادي المشفع يا الله صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله صلى الله عليه وسلم واسقنا يا رب بثنا بحيا هطال يهمع صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم واختم العمر بحسنى واحسن العقبى ومرجع صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وصلاة الله تغشى من له الحسن تجمع صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أحمد الطهر وآله والصحابة مسنا شع صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله Bismillah, inshallah, we're going to ask Sidi Hisham to address this now. Bismillah, we can open our hearts. We're going to just, there's a last thing I'd probably say this evening, but it's such a beautiful uh, narration. Shaykh Allah mentioned the people of Bani Israel. He mentioned the Yahud. And uh, Kaab al-Ahbar, uh, he was a scholar of the Torah. And in a discussion, between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam is considered Kalimullah. He's the one who spoke directly to Allah. Allah says to Musa alayhi salam, O Musa, if you wish to be closer to me than the proximity of your speech with your tongue, if you wish to be closer to me than the proximity of your speech to your tongue, closer to me than your heart is to its thoughts, closer than your body is to your soul, and closer than your eyes are to your vision. And Sayyidina Musa said, Oh Allah, please inform me what I should do. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Sayyidina Musa, Invoke blessings upon the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam abundantly. So Sidi Hisham is going to talk to us today how we can increase our trust in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم 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 صلى الله على محمد
محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا إمام الرسل يا سندي يا سندي يا سندي أنت باب الله معتمدي فبدنيا يا وآخرتي يا رسول الله خو بيدي ويا إمام الرسل يا سند أنت باب الله معتمدي فبدنيا يا يا رسول الله خذ بيدي ما رأت عين وليس ترى مثل طه في الورى بشرا خير من فوق السماء سرا طاهر الاخلاق وشيم ويا امام الرسل يا سندي أنت باب الله معتمدي فبدنيا يا وآخرتي يا رسول الله خذ بيدي ويا ابن عبد الله يا 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 أملي 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 يا ملاذ الخائفين وجلي نظرة يا أكرم الرسل نظرة يا أفضل رسل وبغوث حل لي حل لي عقد ويا إمام الرسل يا سندي أنت باب الله ما تمدي فبدنيا يا وآخرتي يا رسول الله خو بيدي وعلينا زادت المنة دخلنا روضة جنة وصلينا بها السنة وعم الكل بنعم ويا إمام الرسل يا سندي يا سندي يا سندي أنت باب الله معتمدي فبدنيا يا وآخرتي يا رسول الله خذ بيدي يا رسول الله خذ بيدي يا رسول الله خذ بيدي
inshallah. We're going to get ready for our dua. Um, inshallah ta'ala, I wanted to first ask a few things when we make our dua to, to keep in mind the following. Our dear beloved youth in our community, Umar Sinan, passed away this year. And Najib Salehi passed away. We have many loved ones that passed away this last year. We have orphans in our community. We have refugees in our community. We have sick ones in our community. People like Zayn and Osama Kanan, may Allah give them speedy recovery. When we're making our dua, remember our country and ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the barakah of our Prophet sallallahu and the mercy of the Prophet sallallahu into all of our hearts and into the hearts of our neighbors and our communities. That we make dua for all the Muslims across the world and for all the creation. And that we make dua for our teachers, Sheikh Hamza, Imam Zaid, Sheikh Faraz, Dr. Ali Atai, who is here tonight. Dr. Abdullah Ali, Sheikh Ala, Sidi Hisham, Abu Tarif, Qari Amr, Dr. Sidi Yang, who passed away just last week, Ustad Faridun, Dr. Nazir, uh, Sidi Ibrahim, Sidi Mu'ad al Nas, and for the founders and for the trustees and for the board of directors of this MCC of the center, and for all of our problems to be resolved. For those that don't have a job, may Allah give them a good job. For those who are in distress, may Allah. Remove all distress, any family difficulty, any sickness, any cancer, any cholesterol, any hair loss, whatever it is, and let the Prophet solve our problems for us. And let our du'as, inshallah ta'ala, be accepted. And as Shaykh Ala said, and may our character change to be in that with the accordance of the character of the Prophet sallam, And let our hearts begin to trust him, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, and trust him in this life and trust him in the hereafter. Inshallah, we'll ask for our Ustad to make our dua, Inshallah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وأنعم عظم وكرم على سيدنا وحبيبنا وطبيبنا وشفيعنا وقائدنا وقرة عيوننا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم سألك يا الله من خير ما أسألك من عبدك ونبيك سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك اللهم من شر ما استعاذك من عبدك ونبيك سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وأنت المستعان عليك بلاغ ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العظيم سألك يا الله بجاه الحبيب الأعظم صلى الله عليه وسلم أن تجمعنا مع سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ظاهرا وباطنا مقطعا وملاما في الدنيا والآخرة اللهم ادخلنا مدخلة اللهم اوردنا حوضة اللهم اجعلنا مع جميع المواقف لا تبعدنا عنه أبدا يا الله يا الله بجاه الحي الأعظم صلى الله عليه وسلم يا الله سألك يا الله لجميع من انتقل ومن هو مريض ومن هو بحاجة المساعدة يا الله نظرة الرحمة من عندك يا الله من حبيبك المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم يا الله بجاه سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وسر أسرار الفاتحة لحظة مصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم